Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, O oh God, and we honor you, and we praise you, and we bless your holy name, O oh God. Your name is high and lifted up, O oh God. Your name is above every name, O oh God. And Lord, without you, we cannot do nothing, O oh God. Without you, we are nothing. So this morning, O oh God, we just want to bring glory and honor, O oh God, to your holy name, O oh God. Father God, humble me now, O oh God. I bow before you, O oh God, as dust and ashes, a clay container, Lord. And God, I pray that your name will be glorified, O oh God, that the hearts of your people, O oh God, can never be the same by your word that will go forth, O oh God. I pray even now that every ear and every heart will be prepared to hear from you, O oh God. Let your word, my God, go forth, O oh God, without hindrance, oh God. And Father God, when it is all done, oh God, let your people, all your people, my God, let us be resoluted, oh God, to go after you with our everything, oh God. Live in a life that pleases you, that brings glory to your name and to your kingdom. Father God, we give you praise and we give you glory and we honor you and we thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives and everything that you have done, oh God, and that you'll continue to do. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name that makes us possible, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. The spoken word this morning is missed opportunity. And another way to look at missed opportunity is a wasted chance. Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. And Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And that's a powerful scripture. Because when God sent everyone here, he did not send anybody empty. He sent us here all to accomplish for his kingdom and for his glory. But what happened is, and we all know, sin entered the world. And because of sin, what God predestined got delayed for a moment. Because because of sin, we struggle every day to do what God preordained us to do. We read it. He said he created us to be holy and blameless and that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And Psalm, Psalm 139 tells us that he formed our inward parts. He covered us in our mother's womb. He says, I will praise you because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works for that our souls know very well. It says our frame was not hidden from God when we were made and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. His eyes saw our substance being unformed and in his book, in his book, all our days, all our days are written by God because God before the foundations of the earth sent us here to accomplish for his glory. We are not here to take up space. We are not here to have a good time. We are here to forward the kingdom of God on earth. And the thing is when Adam lost that mandate, we could not do that. Because when we are in sin, we cannot, because the kingdom of God is not sin. It's holy, it's righteousness, it's truth, and it is light. So when God saw all the travesty with Adam, he sent Jesus. And this is why we have to love Jesus Christ. Because you see, Jesus gives us the opportunity to live the life 
that God preordained for us to live. And without Jesus Christ, we cannot do what God beforehand created us to do. It is the word of God because God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said the thoughts that he thinks towards us are good. Good thoughts, not evil thoughts. God doesn't want his people to be in bondage. God doesn't want his people not to live the purpose he sent them here to live. God wants us to live how he created us to live. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that we are his workmanship created for good works through Jesus Christ. That is who God created us to be. Amen. We are a holy people through the blood of Jesus Christ. So you have to think about it that Calvary isn't something we should take lightly. Calvary, it's not an ordinary thing. And people have watered down Calvary as if it was so easy. And that all you got to do is say, oh yes, I love Jesus. And then nothing happens. That's lies from the pits of hell. Because Calvary was a way to reconcile us back to the Father. And while we, when we get that reconciliation, now we're back in the right position that we had before the foundations of the earth. But did God give us that for us to waste time? And to occupy space? Or did he give us that reconciliation for his glory and for his kingdom? And we miss that opportunity every day. That is the missed opportunity. Those are the wasted chances. That we come and we hear that God is good. And that we hear the truth. And we do nothing with it because we just leave it where it is. And we don't go deeper. You have to understand that God could have just been done with mankind in the Garden of Eden. He could have said, that is it. Yes, yes. But because his word doesn't return to him void. And in Genesis 1, 26, he said, let us make man in on our image, in on our likeness. Let them have dominion. Let they subdue the earth. When you have dominion, it's because you're doing according to what God wants you to do. We read in Proverbs 22, 22, 4, it says, By humility, humility is being obedient to God. Humility is walking in alignment with God. Yeah. Humility is whatever God says, I'm going to do it because I know who's in control of my life. Amen. Amen. The fear of God is not being afraid of God, but it's having that respect yeah. for God. Do you understand? When you respect someone, you're going to make sure you do what that person but we miss those opportunities every day because we don't walk in humility and we have no reference for the almighty God yes, amen. then how can we bring glory to God that is our purpose our purpose you have to understand we miss our purpose every day we miss the opportunity to bring glory to the kingdom of God so that we can move the kingdom of God forward that is why Jesus Christ came because that was the mandate that Adam had. Yeah. Adam was supposed to fill the earth with the glory of God because he was going to walk in obedience to God. He was going to do God's will and it was going to continue from generation to generation. But when he sinned, instead of glory, he brought condemnation and shame from generation to generation. But Jesus Christ fixed that. You cannot take Calvary lightly. You have to understand that Calvary, if you receive the revelation of what Calvary, the mystery, because there's so many people who hear the gospel preached every day and their hearts are veiled because the devil has veiled their hearts to receive the truth. So if you receive the truth of the word of God, what was accomplished on the cross, you have to change. You can't let that opportunity just pass you by. You can't waste that opportunity. You can never be the same. You have to understand that this, this gospel of the kingdom of God is power unto salvation. It is power. My God, because of what Jesus Christ did, we are no longer outside the camp. We're no longer enemies to God. Can you believe that we were enemies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were the enemies.
enemy of God because we didn't walk according to his precepts. We didn't do what he wanted us to do. We walked according to our own will and our own desires. But God who is rich in mercy, he sent Jesus Christ to pay the price so that we can be one more time in fellowship with God. What are we doing with that? You have to understand that when there's message of salvation, you can read it in Romans 11. When it was preached to the Jews, the word of God said that they rejected it, but God allowed them. You have to understand, this is why you can't take the salvation simple. God allowed his chosen people to reject the gospel of salvation. And his word declares he allowed them to do that so that he could have mercy on all. Because salvation, because from the beginning, God didn't want any demarcation. He didn't want to have Jews and Greeks and Gentiles. He wanted to have mercy on all because he created mankind. So the word of God said he grafted us in, my Lord. He grafted us into the commonwealth of Israel so that now we're spiritual heirs of Abraham. So all the promises that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12, that I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you and through you all peoples of the earth. So because of that man's obedience and because of the work of the cross, today we are benefactors. Of this mighty family of God. Oh what are we doing with this opportunity? What are we doing with this? Because let me tell you. It's not something that we should take lightly. The word of God said we can do all things through Christ. All things through Christ. So it's Jesus Christ. That allows us to walk in the purpose that God sent us here to do. And if we don't have Jesus Christ in it. We cannot accomplish anything. We continue to miss opportunities. And that's not what God has in store for his people. He said, I have good thoughts for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. But we have to want God to do what he said he's going to do. God ain't going to push himself on you. He's not going to run you down and grab your free will and take it from you. You have to realize what was accomplished on Calvary's cross. You have to understand that had it not been for Jesus Christ, the word of God said we were far off. But we have brought, we've been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. That should move you into repentance. That should move you in reconciliation. When you're reconciled to someone, you're going to walk as they want you to walk. You're going to talk as they want you to talk. Because you understand that if they didn't do this for me, I would be nothing. People take salvation so lightly. It's not about just saying I accept Jesus Christ. Your life should show that you are a child of God. Your life should show it. The word of God said that we are, once we are reconciled, we should now be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Do you know what an ambassador is? An ambassador is a representative of Jesus Christ. So that means wherever you walk, wherever you go, people can see Jesus. Shining through. That is what we're supposed to be doing. This is serious business, saints of God. But we miss the opportunity that God has presented before every human being. Because he says it in his word. He said, the end will not come until this gospel is preached. All to all nations. Because he doesn't want anybody to say, I didn't know. He's given everybody the opportunity to receive the truth so that you can live your purpose. You have to understand that is what God wants for his people. He wants us to live how he predestined us to live. And so many of us miss it. We miss that opportunity. We miss it. Because you see, the devil don't want us to get it. So he will bring everything to distract us. But as children of God who know the cost, the price that 
Jesus Christ paid, we have to be resoluted to go after God. Amen. Amen. This is serious business, Amen. saints. This is this is serious business because God did everything to save us. Adam fell from grace. God put us back. Adam lost the mandate. Jesus Christ gave it back. Yes. My God. So that means that now we can accomplish yes. everything God sent us here for his glory Amen. and for his kingdom. So we cannot just take it like it's nothing. Mm. You have to understand yeah. it is so awesome when you think about it mm. because so many people in this world, they're hearing the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ. They're hearing about the kingdom of God every day and it's doing nothing to them. Mm -hmm. So if you get it and you hear it and it's moving your heart, you have to move in alignment with God Amen. so that your life can bring glory yes. to God. Yes, Lord. Don't miss out on who God sent you here to be mm -hmm. because there's going to be a day oh, when we're going to have to stand oh, before the high courts of heaven. Amen. There's a day when we're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of God. And books will be opened. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with my son? And what I gave you to accomplish. You have to understand, we read it this morning in Matthew 25 about the talents. Jesus Christ gave a parable about a king who went and he gave talents to his servants. Some he gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. God don't send anybody here empty. He don't send. Nobody comes on earth empty. Why do you think the devil is trying to kill and to destroy? He wants to kill and destroy what God sent you here to accomplish. And we make it so easy because it's like we don't care. We don't understand the mandate we have. So he gave some five. And the ones who got the five did something with it. They multiply it. That's what happens when you come into the truth and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, your life is changed. And when your life begins to change, those around you start to change. Because that's what light does. Light. Darkness has to give way to light. And when your life is being transformed. And you're operating in the gifts that God sent you here to operate for his glory. And for his kingdom. People around you begin to change. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there's change. Mm -hmm. So the one who had five, it multiplied. The same with the one who had two. But there was one who only had one. Mm -hmm. You have to understand, it doesn't matter if it's one. Yes. It's a gift from God. Amen. It's an ability to bring glory to God. And the word of God said he did nothing with it because he, he was afraid. If you fear God, if you respect God, you're going to do whatever to please him with whatever he gives you. Amen. You're not going to find excuses. And this man, when it was judgment day, had nothing to show. He didn't bear fruits. He wasn't transformed. He didn't testify. He didn't do anything with the life God sent him here with. He did nothing. He gave, he just went back to God the same way he came. Is that no was no change. And the word of God said, God, the word of God said, the king said, take what he has. You have to understand. He took it from him and gave it to those who can use it. For the kingdom of God. You have to understand that's what the enemy wants for every child of God. For you to miss the opportunity to bring glory to God. He wants you to lose what God sent you here to accomplish. And we make it easy. Because we don't go after God with everything. We don't love the Lord our God with all our hearts. We say we do but we don't because it's a walk thing. We have to live a life that testifies Amen. that we love the Lord our God. Amen. We're going to touch on, on King Saul. Because you see, Saul got an amazing opportunity. Yes. Yes. Saul was the first king of Israel. God is king. But he appointed Saul. He said, you are going to reign over my people. That was his appointment. 
That was his assignment. Reign over my people, keep my commandments, walk in my precepts. That's what God wants for all his people. In order for you to operate in dominion power, you have to obey the commandments of God. You gotta walk in his precepts. You gotta be humble. You gotta listen to God. Saul got one thing to do. One instruction. One assignment. You see, that's what you don't know. You don't know when your time is gonna be over. You don't know if it's just gonna be one shot that you're gonna get, that you're gonna miss and mess up. You just don't know. So this is why every day we have to go after God and ask him to help us. Pray and ask God that the purpose for my life, for your glory, be manifested. Let your will be done in my life. Because that's why we're here. And when we go before God on that day, that's business that God is going to talk about. Saul went and did his own thing. God told him to destroy everything. Don't keep anything. And the word of God said he went and he destroyed and he kept what he thought was good. You see, that's the problem. When we are walking with God, we think we can do it our own way. We can go half, compromise. We, can, we miss what God has in store for us when we can't be all in with God. We miss it because Saul did his own thing. Yeah. Kept the best. If God said to destroy everything, mm-hmm. why? who knows what's best? Yeah. You are God. Okay. You go th- you're going to look at something that God said to destroy and think it's good? Mm-hmm. No, God said it's bad. It's bad because yeah. he's Jehovah God. Yeah. Saul kept yeah. it, the word of God said. Mm-hmm. And when the word of God came to the prophet of God and said, I regret It's a sad place. You're talking about a loving God. God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace and compassion. A God who's long-suffering. And when you get God to a place that he says he regrets, that he gave you a thing, that is serious. Because you see, what God loves about, above everything is obedience. It don't matter what you want to do. You can sweep the church. You can sing on the choir. You can do. You can give your body to be burned. You can do all the things that works. But what God loves me yeah. above all of that yeah. is an obedient heart. Yeah. Yeah. God told Samuel, "I regret that I gave and appointed, and it's God who chose him mm. because God gives us all opportunities." Yeah. That is our father is. He give us opportunity. Even when he knows the end from the beginning, he still gives you a chance. And Saul got a chance and he failed. And God said, I'm going to take the kingdom from him and give it to someone after my own heart. Someone who loves me. Someone who's obedient to me. Someone who will always look to me first. The word of God tells us that That Saul lost everything. This was an anointing king. And at the end, you know how Saul ended? He went to mediums. He was consulting witchcraft. Because he was no longer hearing from God. Because that's what happens when you turn your back on God. When you miss the opportunity. Then you don't have the access anymore. You don't no longer have the access. He found no place of repentance. Mm. That's what the devil wants for a child of God. He wants us to get to a place where we can't get repentance because we have have disobeyed God for so much and we have grieved God. Mm. That we ourselves condemn ourselves, don't think we can still reach out to God. Mm. That's the position Saul felt. Saul found himself. And Saul was the one who expelled all the mediums and the soothsayers and the witch, he expelled them from the kingdom. But he found himself in a desperate place because he could not hear from God anymore. Listen, when you get to that place, cry out to God. When you get to a place of desperation, you got to cry out to God because he said he will never deny a contrite heart or spirit. He will never deny he said, seek the Lord when he's near, when he, when he can be found. Call upon him. 
Saul could have called on the name of the Lord. But he sought alternatives. That's the worst thing you can do. Is to seek another God. And I'm going to read what his judgment was. Because Saul, my God, it is so sad. When the judgment came to him, he sought a medium. To, to bring up a prophet of God. That is, the devil is a liar. A witch cannot bring up anything. Familiar spirit, what a deception. But that's when, when you get to a place, you see, that's what happens. When we don't take the opportunity yes. to seek after God and yes. go after God with our yes. everything, the enemy is using those opportunities to destroy us, yes. to pull us further and yes. further and yes. further away yes. Yes. from God. And before we know it, we don't have a place of repentance. First Chronicles 10, 13 says, Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord, and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. Mm -hmm. That's the word of God. He was judged because of his disobedience and because he sought another God. Yeah. That wasn't the true and living God. You have to understand, saints of God, that every opportunity that God gives us to redeem us, when redemption comes to your doorstep, you got to run with the redemption. Yeah. You got to seek God and you got to do everything that you can do yes. to make it right. Amen, amen, amen. Saul was the first king mm -hmm. of Israel mm -hmm. and his line did not, none of his sons, nobody took up. Saul was finished. Mm -hmm. Generations wiped out. The scripture said your generation could have ruled. But because of your disobedience. You see you have to understand. That is what we are doing. If we have children. And we don't receive what God does. And live a life to bring glory to God. What are we sending to generation? What are we giving to our children? And our children, children. Remember what the word of God said. He said I visit the iniquity of the fathers. To the third and fourth generation. You have to understand. You have to. When you get the truth. You got to do something. With it. Saul. Disobeyed God. And his end was terrible. He, he got to a place that he didn't even think that he could still cry out to God. That is a dangerous place to be. Because you could die in that state. The devil will try to kill you. And it was because when you read when the witch of Endor, he went to her and she said, who are you? And he said he wanted to see a man. He wants a man. And this familiar spirit came from the devil and told Saul that he was going to die. Because it's the word of God. That was judgment. He was over. But yet he got an opportunity to be the king of Israel. His sons could have ruled. His grandsons yes, could have ruled. Yes, yes. But none of that happened because King David took the place Amen. of Saul. God. Amen. A man after God's own heart. Because he loved the Lord. He saw God with his everything. He walked even when David sinned against God. He fell on his face. And he repented. He didn't make any excuses. He said, I know I sinned against your God. I'm asking you for mercy. He didn't pretty it up. He didn't blame anybody. He just said, God, I know I sinned against you. That's Psalm 51. And he said, I just ask for your mercy. Don't take your Holy Spirit. Because he said, David knew God. And he knew that if God left him. Because if you go to 1 Samuel 16, the word of God said that after Saul fell, a distressing spirit was upon him. He no longer had the peace of God. You see, that's what we don't understand. We take these things so lightly yeah. when we have the presence of God and the peace of God. Yeah. But when we walk outside of it and it's gone, it it's chaos. That poor man was tormented mm -hmm. until the day of his death. Yeah. Missed an awesome opportunity to bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure 
that as children of God, we don't miss that opportunity. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing or trespasses to us, and committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as through God we're pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Because this was something that we didn't have before Jesus. This is something that was not for us. The promise wasn't for everybody. But God made a way to have mercy on all. So what are we going to do with this opportunity? What are we going to do with this salvation? With this reconciliation? We can call God Father Abba. He's our Father. So we should be doing the things that please God. We should be doing the things we shouldn't need anyone to tell us because God's word tells us yes. how we should live, how we should operate, how we should walk, how we should talk. We sh that should be what we go after. Yes. Let's not make the mistakes of Saul and that man who got the one talent and did nothing with it. There are so many examples in the word of God that shows you people. I think we could touch on Ruth. In Ruth, you remember Ruth? That she was a Moabitess yes. and that Naomi came to Moab and her husband died. And she was there for 10 years with her sons and they got married to two girls, Oprah, Orpah and, and Ruth. And the word of God said when the sons died, Naomi said, I'm going to go back to my people. And the word of God said, he, she told her daughter-in-laws, go back to your family, go back to your gods because I have nothing to give you. And the word of God said, Orpah kissed her. Orpah kissed Naomi and went back to the fake, the fake gods. Redemption came to the door. You see, you have to understand, God is so awesome that he will give you opportunities that so many people don't get. Orpah was with Naomi for 10 years. So she get exposed to the God of Israel, just like Ruth. And the word of God said that she went back to her fake gods. But the word of God said, Ruth clung to Naomi. You see, that's what happens when you come into the knowledge of God. You're supposed to want to cling to God. You're supposed to want to say, your people are going to be my people. And your God is going to be my God. I want to know your God. Because you see, when you declare with your mouth, God hears. Yes. And when you do that, he's going to make a way mm. for you. Or how could, after being exposed to the God of Israel for 10 years, mm. could she want to go back yes, and worship mm. idols? Mm. How could she want to do that mm. after being exposed? And that is the danger, saints of God. That we come and we hear and we don't do anything with it and we go back. It's like a dog returning to its vomit. That's what the word of God says. She missed out on an opportunity of redemption. But Ruth clung to it. And we know that Ruth is the great grandmother of David. Who is the king of Israel. And Jesus Christ came to that line. Because that woman when that opportunity came. She didn't waste that. She said, mm -mm. she said, I've come to know that your God is the true and living God. And I'm not staying in Moab. Moab is the past. Israel is my future. Amen. You see, and that's how we need to declare that my past is in the past. But now that I know what God has done, Amen. we take redemption so lightly. Do you know what redemption means? It means that we were going to die. We were going to spend eternity outside of God, outside his plans, outside of everything he had for us. But he extended his mercy and redeemed us. Amen. Brought us back into his family. Reconciled us. Put us back 
walk on the right path. Yeah. And what do you do with that? You just walk away. <laughs> we never heard about Orpah again. We didn't hear about Orpah again. The word of God in Romans 10, 13, hear what it says. It says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Ruth was saved. Amen. God did a work for Ruth. Yes. You never hear of Ruth never went back to Moab. You never heard about her family. She focused on the God of Israel. And because of that, that woman is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Saints of God, we can't miss the opportunities. Amen. We cannot miss the opportunities we got the opportunity to be redeemed. Amen. And that is just the beginning. God wants to transform us. Yes. God wants to do a work in us so that we can be his children. When people see us, they should be able to see God yes. in us. That we can live the purpose that he sent us here to live. Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. God deposits in us for his glory. And it will take us to different places if we can be in alignment with God. David was a shepherd boy. But yet God anointed him and brought him to be king over Israel and told him that he would never lack a man to sit on the throne. That's what God does. Ruth was a Moabitess who she's a Moabitess. She's not of the descendants of Abraham from the genealogy in that way. She's a Moabitess and you know how Moab came about through incest. But yet God you have to understand when opportunity comes when God presents an opportunity to redeem you and to clean you up and to change your past and you. take you to places okay. you didn't know was possible, my God. Put you before people, you never know what was possible. My God, set things before you that you never know was possible. Yeah. You gotta run. My God, you gotta grab it. Yeah. Naomi, well, she did everything to keep Ruth in Moab. Yeah. The word of God says she clung to her. She held on to her. She said, no, this I, I have no life in Moab. Moab is death. But Israel is victory. And she went after it. And as, as a child of God who has been redeemed, we have to want to live what God sent us here to live. Let's not miss the opportunity. Orpah missed the opportunity. Saul missed the opportunity. The thief on the cross not the one who accepted Jesus, the other one. He was in the presence of the king yes. of kings. And instead of admitting that he's wrong, he deserves what he's doing. He said to the Lord, why don't you save us and save yourself? A missed opportunity. Redemption was right there for him on the cross. Because the other thief admitted I did wrong, Lord. I did wrong, but remember me. You see that confession. You see that God said a contrite heart and spirit. He will never despise. Once you look to him like that, God will find a way to save you. That thief on the cross was with Jesus. That's what he said. While the other one lost the opportunity. Missed opportunity. Wasted chances. Are we going to continue to waste time? Or are we going to be resolute to go after or create a God so that we can live, we can experience the blessings? He said he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that is in the heavenly places. That's what he said he has done. But how can we experience those blessings if we are not in alignment with God? If we're not trying to have that relationship with him? 
That's the only way that we can experience. Because when we walk with God like that, he knows it's going to be for his glory. Amen. It's not going to be about us. And the, the choice is ours. I don't want to be like Saul. I don't want to be like the thief on the cross who didn't accept Jesus. And I don't want to be like Orpah. I want to live yeah. the life that Jesus Christ paid for me to live. And that's the encouragement for all of you. While we have breath, we have life, we have the opportunity to live the life that God created us to live. It is bigger than what we think. We get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives and we miss. We miss who God sent us here to be. It is for us to see God. And I ask him, why did you send me here? I know you didn't send me here to just occupy space. God sent everyone here for a purpose. And it is that purpose that we're going to have to answer for when we go before his throne. Because the thing about God is, he makes every opportunity for that purpose to be fulfilled. He presents the opportunity to us. But sometimes, because of our disobedience, or disobedience, or stubbornness, we miss the opportunity that God has presented. My encouragement is that we no longer miss the opportunities. That we no longer allow situation and circumstances to keep us away from who God created us to be. Because who we think is not who God created us to be. We never know. We can never know. Yeah. I am a living testimony of it. I never knew that I would be preaching the word of God. There's no way. Pastor Vickers, God asked her, what if you sacrifice your family? That was an opportunity. That was an opportunity. And guess what? She didn't miss it. Because she answered when God told her what she had to do. Amen. And the rest is history. And God, day by day, God is telling us to do things. And sometimes we ignore him. Sometimes we compromise. Sometimes we just do what we feel like doing. But saints of God, we miss who God created us to be. If she didn't answer that call, I wouldn't be here today. My children wouldn't be here today. But God had a work. And you see, you have to come in agreement. You have to come in obedience with the work of God. Because his thoughts are not like our thoughts. And his ways are not like our ways. So the way he's going to do it is not the way you think he's going to do it. But whatever he does, it is well done. And it is for us to seek him so that our purpose can be fulfilled. Our purpose is to bring glory to God. That is our purpose. Our purpose is to live every day bringing glory to God and advancing the kingdom of God on earth. And until we get that, we're going to continue in this cycle. We're going to continue wasting time making decisions that are outside the will of God. Free will is dangerous. Free will gets us in trouble. Saul's free will caused him to lose the kingdom of God and his life. Lay your free will down. Put it down so that God's will for all our lives can be done. Because that is what God wants for all of his children. We have work to do, saints. So many people on this earth, they're hurting. They're broken. They're lost. And if we were getting the truth every day, are wasting the opportunity, how can we impact this world? And every word, every testimony, every sermon, every study is going to be a testimony against us because we have heard the truth. So saints of God, it's good news. We have an opportunity today to not let any more opportunities to do God's will pass us by. 
Today is a day for us to be reconciled back to God. For us to repent, to change our thoughts. And ask God to help us. Because this is why we were created. To fear God and to obey his commandments. Because that is man's all. And in closing, I'm going to use Romans 11, 33 to 36. The word of God says, all the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Father God, we praise you. And we thank you, God, that no matter where we found ourselves in life, God, you have given us a way out. You have made a way of escape through the cross, my God. You gave us your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who became cursed for us, who tasted death for us, who died in our place, my God, to reconcile us back to you, oh God. So, Father God, we just ask you, Lord, to forgive us if we've missed opportunities that you have petitioned, you have called, you have beckoned us, you have been reaching out to us and we have ignored you. Forgive us, God. But today we just ask God that you would just draw us unto you, O oh God. And Father God, let your will for our lives be done, O oh God. Let not another day go by, Lord, where we're, not, where we're not walking according to your law, according to your love, according to your precepts, O oh God. Help us day by day to walk in humility and the fear of you, God, so that your will can be done. And that your kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Let your word go forth, O oh God. And let every ear and every heart that receives your word. will be resolute that we're not going to waste any more time, O oh God. Because your coming is near at hand, O oh God. And we want, Lord, when we stand before your judgment seat at that day. God, that we can say that we live the life you sent us here to live. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name that makes all this possible. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Amen and amen.